one of the many government interactions that we had, I was asked, you know, why did why do artists need money? Okay. And unko kaho ki wo donate kare. So I was like, but not every artist is a Shah Rukh Khan or a Sonu Nigam or a you know, mm-hmm. Anjali, etc. And <coughs> the artists from the Ragi and the Gurdwara to the Pandal maker <coughs> to the person who creates designs using flowers to you know the Kathakali dancer. Um, all of these people are part of the you know creative industry segment. And then we realized that we needed to do an advocacy program. to be able to show how the different forms of art and that you know when a bharatnatyam dancer or a potter mm-hmm. say a potter makes a simple clay diya on his pot mm-hmm. people chalo they think 2 rupya kya hai 5 rupya kya main khareed dunga they don't give it the value whereas actually if you and i were to throw clay on a pot we would never be able to make anything correct yes and it takes years of training to be able to throw the clay on the pot to be able to create even a simple diya or a pot you know so given that we said that in india because there's so much of artistic uh beauty mm-hmm. and every product has a sense of artistic thing you know whether it's my uh coaster or my card holder which is the hawa mahal i don't know whether you can see it it's the hawa mahal yes. on one side and the city palace on the other side everything has a design element as it does you know our phones or mm. everything so the idea was to create an advocacy program around the arts to give people a sense of key this is the breadth and width of our uh, our heritage our diversity our syncretic tradition jaise kehte hai na ganga jamuna tehzeeb you know and so that's how it started and as you know once the lockdown started yeah. you know the ecosystem the arts ecosystem was completely destroyed mm-hmm. because we forget that it's not just about the dancer or the crafts person it's the ecosystem so ncpa did a survey recently where they found that to get one person on stage so a singer or a dancer or a theater person one person on stage there's a 33 people ecosystem at an average the janitor in the bathroom the person who opens the hall jo clean karta hai you know the usher the lighting designer the sound fellow the person who switch on the light the electrician the plumber the website that generates the tickets and all of these people have lost their way of being able to earn then you have traditional artists you have the visual artists who or you know the hunars or the 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 folks working in pottery or textiles because the supply chain had had disappeared and there was no and the lockdown happened so nobody was picking up uh, uh, you know stuff and artisans uh, had crores of inventory mm. and no way to be able to sell it and as, as you know komal artists and artisans have no access to bank loans um you know overdraft facilities regular salaries grants nothing zero so unlike the rest of the sector which at least there was some sort of a cushion this sector has none so therefore our thing was that how can we help you know so our matter started so our first we ran a whole series of advocacy videos etc etc mm-hmm. across the visual uh, performing and traditional uh, arts and crafts and then we the first uh, fundraiser we did was with aditi mangal das and mango where we did a fundraiser where we raised a couple of lakhs for the dance community then we did another fundraiser uh for the visual arts traditional you know the gond the varli uh the patchitra etc we did a we did a virtual uh, museum show for them mm-hmm. exhibition with ojas art and then we did this what you've seen uh, last sunday and there's going to be a repeat of it on the 18th we're going to put out the whole six and a half hours again 
it's slightly new. Some of the acts are new because we have so much of content that have come in yeah. from so many different people. And as you, I'm assuming you saw it, so you know that everybody made an effort to do something different for us. So Shaker and the Shillong Chamber Choir did a whole different aspect and, you know, Dr. Subramaniam composed a new this thing for, uh, for, for her work. The dancers created new pieces of work because our thing was also, can this become a platform for performers to come in? Use, because the lockdown, there's nothing open, so can that happen? So that's been successful. We, we had a very ambitious uh, goal to raise about a crore in funding to, re to support about 5,000 artists and families, etc. We've raised so far 50 lakhs. And um, with the second broadcast, which we're going to do uh, uh, in, uh, on the 18th, we're hoping to raise more. And total so far, the arts, um, I believe the Art Matters campaign has raised, I think, about uh, 63 or 65 lakhs. So, so we, we will get to our goal. Yes. And, um, we're leaving the half the way. Yeah, we're already past half the way. And we've already supported, I think, 1,200 families uh, from Majoli in Assam to folks in, in Kashmir to folks down south. So if you go onto the website, you'll see the list of artists and organizations that we've already supported. So, uh, you know, what happens with the pandemic, Komal, is uh, we don't know. Uh, you know, yeah. I can ask an astrologer, Kikya Hoga, but the astrologer, last astrologer said, 27 September, all the planets are together and you'll see, you know, by magic, Corona will disappear and, you know, all of this we've heard. Uh, so to answer your question specifically, um, we are continuing to plan to do it as we've always done it. Obviously, with the thing to follow COVID protocol, what actually happens, we don't know. But as you know, we've done... We already have a virtual series called JLF Brave New World and JLF Words of Bridges. Um, uh, we did JLF London online as a digital program. We're going to do JLF America, JLF Australia, also as an online program and JLF Canada. Uh, and let's see, fingers crossed, Kikya Ho Saktai in January, but I, I don't have a statement right now to make on the January. So you're planning for an on-ground event? It will always be a combination of both because now there's, you know, I'm, I'll give you an example, Komal, even with our uh, Meta Theatre Festival that we did, um, right. did digitally some weeks ago. So, mm -hmm. you know, normally, uh, you know, because the, the, the Theatre Festival happens in Kamani and Sri Ram and LTG in Delhi. So the capacity on any day would be about 1200 people any day. The capacity of our awards night, which used to happen at Kamani Auditorium, is 656. And then we have the dinner at the Taj Mansingh, which is another 300 people. So about 900, 1,000 people. Whereas here now, with, uh, with Meta Digital, we've already reached out to 850,000 people. Wow. Have seen one or the other episode of Meta. And we haven't even begun to roll out the plays yet. Similarly, JLF, um, Brave New World. So if, I don't know whether you've ever been to uh, Jaipur Literature Festival, but our largest ven venue at the front lawn used to accommodate about, you know, 13, 13 and a half thousand people. In one average session of JLF, Brave New World, we reach out to 32,000 people. Similarly, in, in London, for example, our average capacity, because we have three venues, in London, again, about 1,200 um, 1, capacity per hour. Here again for London, our one session uh, has brought together more people than the whole festival last year. Oh, that's and this year, the digital festival has had more people seeing it than all the seven years of JLF London. Okay, so... so digital is here to stay. I don't see that going away. Uh, so uh, what we've done, Komal, is that we have moved many of our festivals um, uh, digitally. So as you know, 
uh, JLF Brave New World started 4th of April, then we moved Meta online. We did our UTBT under the banyan tree on a full moon night, which is our music festival has gone online. Uh, today, our Hong Kong India by the Bay Festival starts, which is also on online. Um, JLF London has gone online. America, which is Boulder, Houston, um, New York, and Toronto will be online in November. But we've also created some whole new uh, platforms. So uh, the first one that just rolled out, and Manish can give you separate information on that, is Kahani, uh, the magic of storytelling, which was, again, a physical festival for kids, etc. now an online wonderful festival, um, a wonderful program. Every week we, we put, on, put on new stories. This can reach out to school kids and kids across the spectrum of five to 13 years of age and to parents and uh, the kids can in turn uh, post back, you know, at the end of every storytelling thing, we have a call to action, key, you know, ye puppet banao ya, ye vote drawing karo. So they can send that back to us and we have a curated thing. So you can go and check online. It's uh, uh, just, just say Kahani Digital and you should get to the, or, or go from the teamwork site. So Kahani is one. Then because of the whole uh, aspect of, you know, like we've got, I believe, Art Matters, we've also created something for the craft people. So it's called uh, Earth Fables, where we will onboard uh, craftsmen who don't have access to say digital or, you know, so they can set, they will send us their products, photographs, etc. We'll put it up onto this website, which will be accessible across the world to be able to provide them an opportunity uh, to be able to, you know, sell their goods. And we were hoping that government would also come on board for that and do it. Mm -hmm. Government side, we had said, you know, there's so much of inventory and we really need to help the craftspeople. They don't want they don't want, uh, uh, you know, a handout. They don't want uh, a donation. They, they've done stuff. They're wonderful mm -hmm. craft people. So Earth Fables is going to go live, I think, fairly shortly. And now we are rolling out a new platform for, for arts education called Art Gyan. Mm -hmm. So Art Gyan is a platform where anybody, if you want to do a basic course on music or Carnatic violin or opera singing or dancing or theater or uh, alternative, um, uh, you know, uh, techniques for healing, etc. You can come register and the course is tailor-made for you. You can do four programs, four sessions, one session, eight sessions. Uh, you know, you have different and you have different levels that you can go through. You can go through level one and then progress to level two and level three. And that's again because of the lockdown and that kids don't have access to their schools, mm. uh, you know, where there used to be possibility of a tabla class or an art class or a visual class. We're trying to make sure that they don't lose that connect. Plus, uh, Komal, in places like America, for example, where school programs don't have the arts, you know, they've, they've been completely for the last nine years American education system has relentlessly been cutting away the budget and removing all funding for arts education in the state. So Florida, for example, teachers can't even buy uh, a paper and crayons in their you know, public schools to do a art class. Forget clay or, uh -huh. you know, et cetera. We're, so we're trying to say that, hey, don't lose connect because what is it that arts education does for you? It allows you to think creatively and therefore it allow you to innovate and become an entrepreneur. And of course, if you want to continue to pursue your passion in the arts, well, fantastic. But at least everybody must have a basic um, understanding like you do of the liberal sciences of the sciences liberal arts and the sciences, you must have it of the arts as well to be help, to be able to help your left and right brain, sort of whatever. So Art Yarn is rolling out. You know, the industry needs to speak in one voice and the industry needs much more empirical evidence to prove to government that we are an industry, that we are, you know, half a billion people or 400 million people who are involved in 
the creative industry, like I said, you know, Ragi and the Gurdwara to whatever. And in the formal sector of this industry, that there are 10 million jobs, 9 million jobs are at risk because of the present mm -hmm. lockdown. The industry needs support. We need policy changes. We need taxation changes. Um, uh, we need to be able to access uh, financing, uh, investments um, into this, into this whatever. And we need to go beyond ki, you know, ye hamari aetihasik, puranik, vedic culture hai. You know, all of that everybody says, nobody does anything about it. So we need to go beyond that. And we need to pay more respect to people, say, in the wedding industry, um, in the industry, say, look at, look at something like Durga Puja, yeah. where the pandal maker, the lighting person from Chandanagar, the flower maker who does these incredible designs, the people who create the Durgas or the Ganeshas or whatever. Each of these people belong to this larger creative industry of the cultural sector and the event sector. And by, and, and in Bengal, for example, uh, the, the Durga Puja is the single largest contributor to Bengal's economy. Not industry, it's this single largest in one month. So if you then look at the fact that it involves all of this, including the event industry, catering, hospitality, building, design, architecture, lighting, permission, security, band baja, dholakwala, dholbala, uh, you know, priests, etc. You're looking at tens of thousands of thousands of people involved. And I'm just talking about one Durga Puja. Look at the Ram Leelas in the street corners across the north of India. Uh, look at all of the New Year celebrations. Look at the Diwali is where you do the columns in, in a professional way. Uh, and going back to the weddings, look at the entire wedding thing, the Mehendi Wali to, uh, you know, the, again, the Dholwala, the musicians, the artists, the stage people, the decorators. It's, it's huge. And we're talking about uh, 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 an, an, an industry that is worth billions, you know. So we need government to look at this seriously. Um, the creative industries come under eight different ministries in the government of India. So HRD will look after publishing and printing. MEA has ICCR under it. Uh, INV has events, then there is, of course, uh, handlooms and handicrafts, women and child, uh, MSME. So we cover this entire thing. Mm -hmm. So, like I said to the, uh, in one of the standing committee meetings with INV, that we are nobody's baby. Na ghar ka, na ghar ka, we are a stepchild. You know, and we fall between the cracks. So we are demanding ki, log, please dekhye ga, taraf, look at the needs etc. We contribute to the economy. We create jobs. So why are we being discriminated against? You know, that's the most important.